This is Ashwin and do like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. On this episode of DRS with Ash, I'm joined by none other than Jawagal Srinath. Uh, in fact, if I have to talk about him, there is a lot to talk about. Someone who's been shy. He's actually shied away from being a coach or someone who's been a commentator. That is the usual routine everybody takes. But Shribai took the route of being a match referee. Shribai, Bangalore Ali, lockdown, Hegi. Bangalore Ali, lockdown, Bahala Chennagi, Madadro, Jana Adike, Spansudro, most of them, Yellarwe, Mane Volge Idru. So Adrinda, it was quite a success on the Helvakadana. Right. Shribai is saying that, tell me Shribai if I've got it right, that you're saying everybody should be inside the home and it has been reasonably successful, the lockdown. Is that right? Lockdown was very, not reasonably, I think it was a good success. Right. I said it was a good success. I think people are responsible. I mean, in Karnataka, Atra, police, Bandu, Hordu, Bardu, Mada, Vashakate, Rila. Meaning, police need <laughs> not to use the law. Police don't have to enforce. <laughs> anyway, Shribai, I want to go back to that match referee part a little bit. See, engineering, Fast bowling, which is cricket, is your passion. I've heard a lot about you speaking on how much you love the game. And then you you have become a match referee now. If I have to rank it in an order, which is the ranking order that you will give and why? Let me put it this way. I think all of them has equal weight. If not for my cricketing um, career, I would not have become a match referee. Right. And uh, had I not done my engineering together, I would not have that confidence either. So ed- education plays a huge role. I mean, unless you blend it with your profession, it becomes very difficult to have that confidence. Not that all of them have done their degrees or whatever, but I think what they go through, uh, you know, in tough times, uh, education makes it a little easier to analyze where you are and uh, how to get out of it. Um, of course, there are no ready recognized solution that education provides, but it provides you the skills. It provides you that don't do well in cricket. I think that is to some extent helped my career quite a bit. When I did my shoulders, I was in crossroads. I didn't know what to do. My bowling shoulder was this thin. So I had to really uh, think hard, but this engineering degree came to a big, <coughs> excuse me, this engineering degree came to my support. That confidence itself, uh, you know, would make me think in the right direction as far as this game was concerned. So going by your priority, I think uh, all of them come together. Um, I think you need a very comprehensive approach towards uh, the game when you're doing a, a job as a match referee. Um, you have to be tolerant, you have to be accommodative, you've got to you have tremendous patience, you need to understand the, uh, you know, the, the history of a player, uh, you, know, you, you, you know, you more or less what you do is a job of a judge uh, in a court. <laughs> so you've got to bring every angle into it, uh, at certain times you've got to mitigate uh, the circumstances, uh, sometimes uh, re- for the repeat offence you've got to be a little more aggressive. I think it's a very holistic job. I think education is the base of all these things. And I would say that for me, the cricket as well as the master free, um, education has been the enabler. Awesome. Shiba, I, I happened to fall upon one of your uh, interviews at Google, right? And uh, <clears throat> that interview really sort of gave me more insight to the match free that I'm seeing regularly, right? I see you on the ground. Uh, I've, in fact, at KSCA, once uh, we had a small meeting with the boys and all, I'm sure you remember about it. So that's where I'm going to start this because I know uh, the administrator of Karnataka Cricket Association, Javagal Srinath, and the cricketer, Javagal Srinath, and the match referee. But Karnataka is quite large for you inside your heart, right? If your heart had to put something inside, how much would you uh, rate back to Karnataka cricket? I think it all started here. Um... And then, you know, Mysore was the base for me to start with and then graduated and cricket became, uh, uh, you know, trans- we slowly moved to Bangalore. Uh, all the big games were played in Bangalore. Um, you know, you grow from the grassroots levels. I mean, the kind of support what you get from your players. Sometimes, you know, <clears throat> Ashwin, when you represent India, uh, when you look back and think, uh, you know, what made you play this, um, play for your country? Uh, it is all because of each and every player who played with you at your gully cricket. All of them inspire you to, to a large extent. Those wins and lose, uh, losses uh, help you think better, the way you want to progress to the next level. The little club cricket, the school cricket, your, you know, the co fast bowler with you in the college cricket, the co fast bowler in your. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, league cricket, 
you know, every aspect, I think the batsmen who played you, the batsmen who gave you, uh, you know, the batsmen who, who gave them their wickets, all of them, you know, uh, the captains who have played with you, um, the team secretaries who have been, um, you know, who pinned that hopes and faith in your ability. You know, if you really look, everything is so intertwined and delicately uh, kind of stitched together. So you can't even think that if not for this, you would not have made it to the next level. So I would say Karnataka is that fabric for me where everything started and gave me a wonderful foundation of uh, this game. So therefore, I think it will be always, um, you know, big in my heart. And, and you know, that, therefore, our stint with Karnataka Shari Trade Association, myself and Anil, you know, we had to really hard press ourselves to get into the association to make a difference. So, you know, that's, I would suggest everyone, I mean, any cricketer, uh, who feels that you know he has to give back something to the game um, to form the full circle of his cricketing life? Uh, he should be part of the administration. Uh, take the accolades, take the brickbats, take everything in the same stride, and uh, you know don't don't be afraid of criticism. Uh, that's part of your life. Um, when you are when you know the game better, when you have played the game at the highest level, I think you should try to make a difference at the grassroots level. Right. Um, when you're speaking, I'm feeling so, you know, I'm getting a little bit of goosebumps because I am, like, it, looks like I'm, it looks like I'm talking to someone who's completely come the circle and evolved and totally in peace with himself. But Shriba, you came as a tear away quick, right? You were, you were known for the speed. You were known for the, you know, uh, sort of carry away quick. That's sort of a presence from India. Were you the same sort of person then or have you come the full circle and settled down like this? I think, um, you know, people associate aggression with pace and then they say, look, uh, you were aggressive by character and therefore you were able to bowl fast. I don't believe that actually. I think I believe that it's your action. It's a God gifted action. No two actions are the same. And so no two personalities are the same. Um, <clears throat> fast bowling came naturally to me. Um, so you, you need to have something to really uh, get started, to get noticed. And that was pace in me. And, um, you know, when I started bowling, it was more of in-swingers. There was hardly anything that could go out. I tried my level best, but my action was such that I couldn't get the ball in. Met so many people, asked everybody, tried to change my action, um, did everything to get the out-swinger going. Then these are the process where you try to know yourself better. And then I realized at some stage that it is in-swinger, stick to the in-swinger, master it, and then, you know, probably try to find some other variations along with that. The basic mistake, which most of the youngsters do at a very young age, is to bowl an in-swinger and then try to bowl an out-swinger. You've been gifted, you've always been, I mean, any bowler would be gifted with one swing generally. So I have got a chance to speak to Imran Khan in 1993, Shahjah. <coughs> so I asked him about you know, the outswingers and all of it. I mean, he was busy in the gym and he said, look, stick to one thing. If you're able to master six balls coming into the batsman from the right areas, that itself is good enough. You know, such um, information sticks to your head. So there is not much to do, but to practice the same thing again and master the, those deliveries, which you can bowl at will. Same advice came from Dennis Lilly. Right. Stick to what you do. Can you bowl those line and lens consistently and get the ball in all the time? Because you know cricket that, you know, sometimes you wish the ball to come in, but it goes straight, that is out swinger. So it's your pattern of deliveries which sets the batsman up. And that little variation should happen after the ball pitching uh, from the same areas which you have bowled the previous ball. So, you know, such ideas don't come uh, so easily. But once you come with such, when somebody comes with such information, you know, you need to start thinking and then start working on it. Not everything works for you, but you listen to people. Uh, you know, sometimes I and Kapil used to have a long, long conversation about outswingers and inswingers. Um, interesting conversation. I mean, if you really, with Kapil, I think you've got to look more into what he does and then learn. You know, he might not be able to explain this to you in exact words, but Keep watching him from mid-on, mid-off. Plenty to learn from him as well. Right. Amazing, Shiva. You spoke about the in-swinger. <clears throat> the moment you talk about in-swinger, the ball that you bowl to Keith Atherton to open things up, you know. 
sort of one of let's say one of the ball ball of all time you can call that and that was in australia right how did you feel after that delivery to keith up it was a um, tight game by the end of the day it okay. was a very crucial uh, uh, you know it was a low scoring match and then in the end sachin came and won the match for us it was an absolute you know these games really um, you know build that confidence in you that you belong to the uh, test level or to the international level um, you know you have a lot of self doubts when you start with a um, lot of expectations but such wickets uh, can really um, you know make you think better and also make this make see cricket as a career honestly ashwin i never thought that i would take cricket as a career uh with thought you know engineering and those days it used to be the north and- i've always wanted to ask you but as a match referee you still hold on to that kookaburra white ball you held on to that as a bowler in 91 92 you bowled with it do you think the ball has changed much at all absolutely i think this is one of my um grounds i would say because the game is more tilting towards uh, the batsman um well i mean if that's the commercial way of building the game well and good i mean we can't complain about it but the ball what we used to uh, you know feel those days had but the seam was quite um, pronounced and but now if you see it is absolutely flat and therefore you can see that there is nothing much that happens with the ball initially but earlier i think uh, the dynamics of the ball was completely different uh, the swing the more the seam obviously you know you are an engineer you understand the dynamics the air dynamics works brilliantly and then obviously the ball seems in the air as well as after pitching but now if you see the balls it is more or less flat so that's a bit of a concern for me as a bowler right we are talking about 91 92 to till now in 2020 but i felt as a bowler when i started playing the ipl in 2009 10 20, from then onwards the ball has changed i almost feel like a stitch of the ball has gone but anyway like you said Uh, those are the demands of the modern day game so i mean we will have to adapt to it but shibai uh, leading on from 91 92 you came as the staraway quick bold in fact you have a recorded ball which is 157 alister campbell goes on to say i felt like jawagal shrinath was quicker than alan donald okay these are these are such big statements and india was not known for producing such quick bowlers in those days it was more about spin and batting and stuff like that how did you feel then to be this sort of you know a line walking alone you know there are only going to be two fast bowlers and if you were a, you were for a while the third seamer right when kapil paji used to play so how did you feel see i started feeling the heat when prasad and myself used to bird on the shoulder and two spinners and two fast bowlers um, to add um, you know to rub salts the wounds uh, in india it used to be just one sole fast bowler that was me and then three spinners it used to be frustrating at times because you know you want to contribute on the field you just don't want to be a symbolic representation on the field so uh, <clears throat> i i always thought that when we went abroad we were falling short of one or two bowlers and i myself because of the change of ball we could not really get used to the uh, kukubaras or uh, the dukes uh, for quite some time by the time we got used to the ball the series would have already been um finished so keeping all these things in mind the 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 foremost part is that post the new england series in 96 i realized that unless there are battery of four good fast bowlers when we go abroad it is going to be difficult i will always be overbold um you know by lunch i would be nearly 12 to 6 12 to 13 overs by lunch then again by tea i would have bowled 18 overs and my last spell would have been the most weakest spell ever because you are bowling into your 22nd or 23rd overs and how many times that has happened so if you have four or five good fast bowlers then you can start thinking about planning because you have enough energy so conservation of energy is very crucial for fast bowlers when you run in from 22 yards or 30 yards and then um, you know when you give out give out everything on every, on every ball um, you know your plan has to be proper Uh, and you know you know fast bowling and you are the spinner you know you need to control the ball what you do with the fingers it has to affect uh, yeah. after 22 21 yards so <clears throat> it's not an easy, it's not a, a very easy uh, aspect i would say so have many fast bowlers i mean i was more keen to look into fast bowlers like zahir and ashish and all these guys i wanted good fast bowlers in the side so that we share that responsibility you know, one man or two guys cannot do too many things for the side so things can only change if you have go you know three match winners then fast as fast bowlers i mean then the the thinking of the captains change the wicket changes all of it 
So it was, I was desperate to look for good fast bowlers. Um, you know, Binky and myself, we went on for quite a long period, but we wanted the third and fourth seamer who could cement his place and who could also become a strike bowler eventually. So that's where we lost it. But um, post 99, 2000, when Zaheer came in, when Ashish came in, uh, Ajit Agarkar was there for some time. So when these three fast bowlers came in, it became a little more easier. So when people think that it should be one and that man himself, I think that doesn't work. Uh, either if you, even if you're good, you're, you get overboard and your effectiveness drop considerably. Sure. Drops considerably. So, you know, these are the things um, we need to, you know, I'm sure the, probably now, Ashwin, I think we have the best fast bowling quartet India has ever produced. I must say that. Sure. Um, the Bumras and uh, the rest of the guys, and they're amazing, uh, led by Bumra. So, Things have changed now because of IPL perhaps, um, you know, you bowl under pressure uh, for 10, 12 years of good IPL will make you, will make anybody a good bowler for sure. Uh, if you are so concerned. Yeah, that, was, that was pretty much what I was going to ask. The current <clears throat> fast bowling generation of India was obviously, uh, you know, uh, benefited with the advanced science and training and rehab and physiotherapy. A lot of things coupled together, good awareness with respect to diet. Now, what we are diving into is the fact that how did you manage all this as being the single fast bowler? And sort of bowling that quick, you know, you were bowling 140, high 140s and early 150s. And what sort of training support did you have, Shiva? What knowledge did you have around it? It was tough. Uh, Ashwin, we have no knowledge. Um, our training was, you know, below par. We could not, we didn't know how to train, what to train. Uh, the information, what you gathered when you went abroad, talking to various people. Um, everybody has their own regime. West Indies fast bowlers had their own regime of uh, training. Australians were quite, um, you know, strenuous in their workouts. England had their own way of training. So England '95 uh, probably broadened my horizon on training and all of it. Right. Even um, you're looking at physiotherapy, the importance of um, you know a good massage after a game, and all those things started dawning a little late. Uh, that was probably, I was already 29, 30 by the time it came in. Um, the technology, I think that was probably the best thing that happened to me in my career, uh, post 2000. Um, more or less, everybody was exposed to the same kind of knowledge. And just like you guys are now, have the best of best facilities around the world, but that is available for every other team. So it negates that effect that somebody's advantage, somebody you know, has the advantage over the others. Uh, same thing back in in our days, um, but I think like Kapil used to train very hard, you know, on his own, not with the team, but on his own. He used to be a, a tremendous uh, workhorse on his own, on you know, on the in the gym, or it could be running ten kilometers or whatever it is. Um, so I think onus was on us in those days uh, because what we did on the field was very little. As a team together, we never trained those days. When I go out there and say, you know, I'm a vegetarian and uh, everybody goes, where is your protein source? Because they talk about at least having 80 to 100 grams of protein in a particular day. How did you manage being a vegetarian and a fast bowler? Is it possible? Is it doable? Well, Ashwin, we never had the concept of carbohydrates and the fibers and the fat and the proteins. No, no, no such con. Just eat what is available. And uh, being vegetarian most of my career, but I changed a little bit uh, in between. I started eating chicken and stuff, but that was only because I could not get any other food, but preferably vegetarian and um, back to vegetarianism again. Um, you know, th those days, I mean, diet was probably something which was absolutely, we were all of us, I think, were in ignorance of diet. There was absolutely no idea about what to eat, what not to eat. I think now we have so many things, the right proportions and what to eat in the morning, what to eat in the evening, but those days, nothing. And diet was probably the most ignored part of our sport. Right, Shiva, I can't go away without talking about one of your most uh, memorable games. Uh, I, you, I saw South Africa being rattled by you with the magic of reverse swing. Especially when it came to the subcontinent, that was one weapon a fast bowler needed to have. Uh, how did it happen? Did you again learn from the likes of Ram <laughs> Khan or Vasim Akram? Or, uh, how important is reverse swing? Is it more about shining the ball? How do you reverse the ball? It's basically, well, I mean, the heavier side, when the ball will drift towards the heavier side. So when you, you know, when the other end is, uh, when the other side of the ball is not, it's left as it is, uh, you can't do much with that. 
<clears throat> I think uh, where the ball pitches on the pitch, sometimes the Indian dry pitches help, uh, you know, in a way damage the ball on one side. When I say damage, it is about the sheen is off quickly on one side. So you take care of the other side. And then, of course, you put your sweat and spit and whatnot to make it heavier. So the heavier side, the ball drifts towards the heavier side. I mean, as simple as that. So that's what is reverse swing is all about. When you throw a parachute up in the air, the heavier side comes down. So this is more on the horizontal way of doing it. So that's the reverse swing. But there is a thin balance, you know. You've got to really work on the ball, make sure that, because that's the only weapon what the fast bowlers have in India. On Indian pitches, I think Pakistanis are expert. They're exponents of this because even Pakistan you know, pitches are not um, uh, any different to the Indian wickets. I learned a lot from those guys. Um, it was good to see them bowling, uh, you know, those big reverse swings. Um, I would say that any Indian bowler uh, now nowadays with two ball, two white balls, it is difficult to get that reverse swing because there isn't enough damage on one side of the ball. Um, but I think even in test cricket, I would say, you know, reverse swing is the key for fast bowlers to win matches. Maybe not that much when you go abroad, but on uh, Indian surface, I think reverse swing is the key for any fast bowler. And I have seen Shami and all these guys operating with great control. I'm, I'm very pleased to see them bowling that. Yeah, uh, but Shiva, uh, that particular afternoon against South Africa and many other uh, test matches that I've watched, you guys operate yourself and Binky Bai as well. Uh, reverse, reverse swing was almost a common feature in almost every test match. It used to happen at some stage of the game. Uh, to a large extent, reverse swing is, is not that common now. Uh, why do you think this is? Is it because of lack of knowledge uh, for the current generation on how to do it or the ball? What is it? I think uh, looking after the ball becomes extremely important. I've seen the way Wazim used to scream on the field and understood the intensity in, with which the ball has to be taken care of. Um, you know, every player on the field should shine the ball and the way they hold the ball so that, you know, no sweat goes on to the other side. Um, the shiny side has to be protected so well that, you know, even the smallest of uh, patch of dryness has to be uh, shined and the other side will have to be very careful. Even the slip field is the way they hold the ball and manage with it. Everything becomes important. So, we see that, I mean, but obviously, you know, you have come in and few good spinners and all of you have got, you know, taken many wickets. Uh, Bumra has seen him operating with good control. Shami has been operating. Umesh, when he is really going all centers, I have seen him bowling some uh, good reverse swing. Yeah, I think it is something which you need to learn over a period of time. And, uh, you know, especially when the wickets are not really great for the fast bowlers. Um, I don't think they should lose their hopes. They should uh, be looking for some reverse swing, uh, you know, post 30 overs. Uh, a live tutorial on how to reverse the ball is right in front of me. Thank you, Shribai, for saying that. But Shribai, another important aspect that I've always noticed as a youngster watching the game is uh, how yourself, uh, Venkatesh, Venki Bai, Anil Bai, and then probably a little bit of Doda Ganesh and David Johnson, a massive battalion of bowling coming from Karnataka, right? And what would a, what would a conversation look like, Shribai? In, in, under pressure, when you're in a game scenario, in a test match, uh, for example, the opponent team is going really well. What would you guys talk? Uh, because you guys must be have been playing from Karnataka into the Indian team. How did you feel like? What would you talk? We just, just spoke generally about who should be bowling what. Um, you know, especially how do you take wickets? Uh, how do we help him get a wicket? Whether he's bowling the right lines, whether he's you know bowling the wrong lengths, um, the kind of field placement that we need. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, nothing works for you on the field as you have uh, noticed yourself. So, whether he's in the right frame of mind. We think we used to, I mean, language used to be very crucial. Ganesh and David Johnson uh, sometimes, you know, struggle to communicate the right things in English. But, you know, you've got colloquial languages always help. Uh, we used to have uh, a good conversation with them, give them the right confidence, um, you know, get them going. So, it's be it Anil, Rahul or any one of us. Um, you know, it, not necessarily the Karnataka boys, even boys from the other states, uh, we didn't really differentiate one another. A uh, lot of things have been said about, oh, you Karnataka boys need to be together or Tamil Nadu boys need to be together. That's not the way the, when you play for the, that's not the way it goes when you play for the country. Uh, I think we need to see everybody in neutrality. Um, I think what we need to see is the talent and how to harness the talent, um, keeping in mind the objectives of the team. So, therefore, um, Yes, when we speak to the Karnataka boys, it is more to do with 
uh, our own language and a little bit of fun and banter in that language. Uh, otherwise, I think um, it was more cricket on the field. The reason I asked that question was because uh, you helped Anil Bhai into that 10 wicket haul. When Ramesh tried to catch Vakar Yunus at Square Leg at Ferocia Kotla, you, you were an enabler for Anil Bhai to pick up those 10 wickets. And that is when I want to know what the communication was like. I think um, it was quite obvious that he was running through the side and we just wanted to give him ample opportunities to finish the match um, by taking all the 10 wickets. And Ramesh being Ramesh, you know him very well, that he was running after the ball to catch it. Uh, I was bowling wide down the leg side and Wakar wanted to just give away his wicket to make sure that he doesn't get his 10 wickets. So those two overs probably were the most difficult overs that I have bowled in my life. Uh, it was very uh, challenging. Um, we were bowled four or five in wise and stuff. Um, but one thing was for sure that, you know, good things happen to nice people and Anil being such a wonderful gentleman. I think uh, sometimes Ashwin, you, you know, the, the, the way you can be part of such um, massive record is by supporting somebody. If it's not that everything happens to everyone, but if something is happening to someone, you better be part of it. I think being even being a part of something nice also needs to be a nice person and rightly so you were there. But Shribhai, uh, tell me, tell me some, uh, one more thing. You spoke about Karnataka cricket differentiating and all that, but look from the fence, I have always watched Karnataka cricket and said, wow, there is something that's sticking these guys, right? Uh, it's not a joke. Always produced a line of uh, you know, talent for Indian cricket. And mostly the bowlers have come, but a lot of batting talent also seems to be coming from Karnataka. Not just then, Rahul Bhai came through. You had Sujit Somasundar who made a brief appearance. And now there is a battalion of batters coming into the Indian team from Karnataka. Uh, what would you attribute this to? Is there something that you guys are ticking that others are not? I would now, I think in the last 10 years, a lot of things, good things have happened because of IPL. The way IPL have attracted the, um, you know, the youngsters, um, I think that's amazing. I mean, you talk to anybody, uh, they speak about IPL. Now, the translation from earlier, it used to be from the test cricket to the ODIs and from the ODIs to the T20s, but now it is yours. You know, somebody who does very well in T20 now aspires to play for the ODI team and also tries to see whether he has skills to play the test cricket. It has started to some extent. Not, not that it is, it is the way, it's the only way that is happening, but uh, it has started happening. I think Rahul... Uh, K.L. Rahul is one standing example of that, you know, who really made his name through uh, the T20s at the, uh, you know, bigger levels. And then he has now taken his cricket all the way into the test cricket. So even these are the good things of uh, IPL. Although sometimes I feel the T20s is, is also deciding the future of many players at a very uh, early stage of their career, saying that, look, this is exactly what you're fit for. You're not really fit. You don't fit into the bigger scheme of things. I still feel that test cricket is the mother of all cricket. And I think anybody who plays test cricket for a longer period, I think I would say he has depth in cricket. Um, T20 is a different game altogether. When you're looking at, um, you know, power, you're looking at, um, you know, wins and loses for the same evening. But test cricket is something where you grind your cricket. Um, you know, it is thinking. It is all about... If power is very limited in test cricket. It is all about your pure skills, um, your dexterity and so on and so forth. So I feel that, you know, test cricket is the uh, cricket what we need to uh, look up to uh, as an youngster for him to feel that he's a complete cricketer. Right, awesome. Shibai, now I'm going to play a small game. It's not anything to do with fun. Uh, <clears throat> you know, my earliest memory of you, I must confess here, is uh, when I came to watch the practice session, I was a ball boy for the practice session when you guys were playing a test match in Chepok. And I remember when, you, when your bus left, the movie of Rajini Gant was released, Baba. And you showed the Baba sign and you left on the bus. I don't know if you remember it. I clearly remember it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a question and give you a language, either Kannada, Tamil or English. You have to answer in that. Right? The first question is someone who you will know a lot because of being a match referee. Uh, Mahindra Singh Dhoni. What is, what is your experience about him? He's quit. He's obviously you know, uh, retired now, but what is your experience with him and what do you have to say? English. I think he's a yogi for, uh, he's a yogi in cricket. I think uh, the way he has understood the game, um, his detachment to the results, um, you know, when you look, when, when he speaks, the way he conducts himself and on every victory, if you see him, he holds the cup, one of the 
you know, most, uh, uh, you know, uh, prized cups. He just hands it over to somebody and walk away from the scenes. You know, when you look into all these things, you know, when things are not going well on the pitch, when, when you know, the team is struggling, I mean, his body language, his composure, as if nothing has happened, you know, that he can only be a yogi to, to be such a wonderful uh, cricketer. I think the more you disconnect your senses from the game at the right time, the better it is for you. I think he's a master of that. So, a lot of respect for this man. Any, any experiences you had with him as a match referee, especially in the IPL? Um, it has always been a good, uh, uh, you know, uh, chat with him every now and then. Um, no incidents as such with him. But it has always been some queries about why should it be this way or why shouldn't it be that way. But I can recollect my first... Um, my, my first meeting with Dhoni was in <clears throat> 2003, uh, post my cricketing career in Kenya. Uh, there was a triangular series between Kenya, India and Pakistan. In all the three games in the league stage, all the till the finals, Dhoni just won the match single-handedly. Um, Dinesh Karthik was also part of the side and Sandeep Patil was the coach. By the end of it, I mean, you the way he disdainfully played the fast bowlers and the spinners and, you know, as if, uh, you know, this, he was playing some school cricket or, you know, you put a Ranjit Trophy player in a school cricket and the way he succeeds. I was so thrilled that I ran up to the dressing room by the end of the series. I called him out and said, look, I'm a big fan of yours. Very shortly, you should be playing for India. All the best. You know, I was so thrilled to go and talk to him even then when he hadn't even played for India. And I think he lived up to it and you see where he is now. I mean, as I said, he is an absolute yogi for this game. Lived up to it is a very, very, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> very small statement to make for such a guy with so many uh, things. But Shribai very well pointed out. Shribai, my next question is going to be about something we have had a chat on and you will be answering about it in uh, Tamil. Okay. And uh, you have to tell me what the spirit of the game is and why spirit of the game is confused. Why is the bowler constantly accused? Or why is it? Does it fall under the spirit of the game? As a match referee and as a fast player. It has gone through a lot of uh, test, this mankading. If a boy to put the entire responsibility on the umpires or put the entire responsibility on the captain or put the entire responsibility of the a bowler was uh, one way of looking into it. Now, whether it is fair or not was the question. But I think if you go deeper into the rules of the game, it is very clear that you are not supposed to leave the place. And if anything of that sort used to happen now, even if it is inadvertent that the batsman would leave the place, um, and if it happens to be the last call of the match, and there is a run out which <clears throat> is in by an inch, but he has already taken three foot forward before the ball has been delivered, it, the result becomes unfair. I mean, one of the teams will probably pay for it. So, I think I would like to see a balance here. Uh, I would want, uh, you know, the, the batsman to stay, be more careful, look into the um, uh, you know, arm of the bowler. After the ball is released, he had to let himself go. Right? It cannot be that he is gaining four to five, um, you know, feet uh, advantage every ball. And T20, every ball matters. How many games go to the last ball? So, I am for one thing that, you know, the, the, the bowler has no, is focusing on the batsman. I mean, if you see, uh, that's the reasonable way to see the bowler concentrating on the line length, everything. So, for the batsman to stick to his screens till the ball is released is no big deal because he's not batting nor he's thinking of anything else. Um, so, the batsman shouldn't leave the crease and the bowler should focus on his bowling and the batsman that he's going to bowl. And if the batsman is taking an undue advantage and if he's, um, you know, involved in a run out, I'm fine. I'm, I'm perf perfectly okay with that. The rules have been set, reiterated many times. And I think it is not about T20, but it is all in, in every format of the game. It is the, the onus is on the batsman to stay and stick to the crease until the ball has been delivered. I think that's the best way to look into it. Don't look for any empathy 
Don't look or invoke the spirit of the game. Uh, the spirit of the game is with the runner. He cannot move out of the crease. If he's doing it, then he's not uh, invoking the spirit of the game itself. So I would believe that the, the, the batsman should stick to the crease. Right. Awesome. Awesome, Shribhai. Uh, truly said, the bowlers club. Uh, thank you so much. And okay. anyway, moving on, Shribhai. Uh, one of the questions, this is a Kannada segment. Talk us through the relationship between you, Venki Bhai, Anil Bhai and Rahul Bhai. Uh, from Karnataka, winning Ranji trophies and then India, your relationship with them. Navella, what to get better way, which was a tumba important to them. Um, under 23 tournament, what cat common, we under 19 tournament, what cat common, now under 19 hardly, but under 23 are there. A thousand million state junior cell of what he had common. So our base, so our foundation, Bada Mukia, uh, when we got into Ranji Trophy side. Then Ranji Trophy out of in a span of one or two years, we all played for India. So, you know, there is a lot of things that we share. The under 23 days from there to Ranji Trophy days, and then uh, all the way to the Indian Indian team. So there is a bondage uh, which is very special amongst all three of us. I think we, you know, coming from similar backgrounds in life as well. I think uh, we bond very well. It could be the personal fights what we have. It could be the good things, good times that we have spent. I think we are still able to come back together as one for all good reasons or for bad reasons and to take this game forward. I think the kind of influence what Anil Rahul Venki uh, wielded on me or with a way, um, the other way, I think that plays a huge role in everybody's cricket. So at any stage, we cannot say that oh, they're another player in the side, but I think they all have played a huge role uh, in our games here. Yeah. Unbelievable, the kind of camaraderie you shared. It's very, very visible even from the distance because when you came back to play a role for Karnataka cricket, all of you came together for that also. But Shribai, we can't, we can't leave this uh, show without talking about this wonderful, wonderful game. It will always be etched in my memory. Is the game where you and Anil Bhai closed out the Titan Cup game, where you batted on a different genre. You both batted unreally well and got us home. What was the communication between the both of you during that uh, partnership? I think I was more aggressive. So obviously, Anil, knowing him, I mean, he was. Good to have Anil as a partner at the other end. I think, um, you know, the way we talk, the way we speak, the on, only thing that we spoke together was, you know, let's not get run out, as simple as that. <laughs> he said the same thing too. <laughs> I, could, I, could, I could run a little faster than him, but I was very keen to, you know, um, take a single. And um, Anil said, look, if we don't get run out, we will get through the innings easily. So, hold on, hold on. That's exactly what it was. But I think when the ball was there to be hit, let's go and hit it. Uh, this is because if I was asked to, you know, defend or something, it would, that was not my cup of tea anyway. So, uh, you know, the whole conversation was about what's the runs? Um, should we take chance on the last two balls or the first two balls? Let's go for it. So, every over it was different. I can vividly remember each and every ball that we played uh, in that particular match. Um, it was a good game for India. Right. Uh, Shribai, before we close off, uh, I'd like to ask you a quick-fire round of 3-3 questions. Uh, you played cricket, you watched cricket, you've been a match referee. You are all-time favourite three cricketers. I would say Sachin would be number one because we grew watching him and he was an absolute inspiration for all of us. I think Sachin would be number one. Um, Kapil Dev would be number two. Um, I'm going by... The order, I think now Dhoni would be number three. Uh, you are, uh, are you, are you big of a, a bit of a movie person? Do you watch movies? Not much, but yes, odd movies uh, I have watched here. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Your favorite, three, three favorite actors? Khan movies, uh, yeah. Amitabh Bachchan, uh, Shah Rukh Khan, of course, um, Rajini Khan. Mm. Okay, Shibai, either you say or Rajini Khan, why Rajini Khan? Yeah. I think the special effects, I think he brings tremendous energy into, into your life. I mean, even if you're depressed, go and watch Rajini's movie. He's always, you know, coming from nowhere <coughs> and then trying to uh, make a better life of uh, the whole thing. I mean, the way his screen presence, um, you know, that little, that extra, uh, you know, that, that zip what he brings into the movie, all of it, I think. I, I truly love him, um, the way he is. Um, I have met him a couple of times. Uh, I've had have you? Him, 
<clears throat> Once I met him at the airport, can you believe it? And then he, he offered me, you can come, I'll drop you on the way. If you want. Yeah. It was so nice of him to say that at the Bangalore airport. Um, oh, wow. So, I mean, the Jrikanth has been a, a real, um, you know, when you, when you don't have a good day or when you're having a lean patch in life, just watch Rajini movies, I think. <laughs> You will come charged uh, out of it, yeah. If you're looking for inspiration, watch Rajini movie, Shribai recommends. Right, Shribai, now uh, the small Kannada segment, I'm going to talk about each of your players and you're going to tell me in one word, a Kannada word you need to find. Uh, Venkatesh Prasad, to describe them. I think, um, soft gentleman, I would say. Kannada right. word, Shribai. Nalla Paya. Nalla Paya. Okay, Anil Kumble. Um, patience, tolerance. Uh, patience, uh, tolerance. Samadana. Ah. Um, Purumai. Mm. Uh, yeah, the other one, tolerance. Again, I don't know what you say for tolerance. Mm. <laughs> right. Sunil Joshi, the current chairman of Selectors. Um, talented, uh, unrealized, of course, but uh, heavily talented, be it bad. I, I would say he's a poor man's uh, uh, Gary Field Sobos. Okay, right. Rahul Dravid. Solid uh, person, so solidity is what I would solidity. say. Okay, okay. Now, 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 uh, now, 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 Mohammed Azuruddin, your captain. Very nice man, he's a great human being. You know, my understanding of Azar was, was, um. You know, I made, I was fortunate to make a debut under him and the way he looked after me, the way, you know, he was always soft and never ever aggressive towards us. Um, yes, he used to come and talk to you sometimes and an odd temper used to get exchanged. But otherwise, I think he was a wonderful chap uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed his, uh, you know, he, sometimes I found him extremely innocent. Sometimes I found him little aloof, but I think in the mix of the two, I think, you know, he was, he turned out to be a, a good person as well. Right. Last and final, Shivai, Saurav Ganguly. <clears throat> I think he was the best captain that I have played under. Um, among Sachin, um, Azar and, you know, all of them, I think he was the best captain. I mean, uh, he turned the head uh, of the Indian cricket at the right time to, to see the, um, you know, world in a better light. Um, I think, you know, he was much junior to us, at least by two to three years or so, maybe four or five years. But, um, you know, we got together. He made us come together, all the seniors. Uh, that was probably one of his strengths uh, to, to take this game to the next level. You know, obviously, we came back from the backdrop of all the fixing and all of it. And then that really made four or five of us to come together. And I think he enabled it nicely. Uh, just not with the five, six seniors, but also the way he worked on the youngsters like um, Yuvraj and, and uh, you know, Yuvraj Singh and Harbhajan Singh and all of it, uh, Seva. I think, you know, that's real team building started happening uh, under him. Um, you know, I have a lot of regards for his captaincy. This chat has been nothing but outstanding, Shiba. I've completely enjoyed and lived Indian cricket through you when I watched growing up as a youngster. But before I let you go, Srinath was one of the cleanest ball strikers I have seen as a young youngster, okay, watching the game. Uh, pinch hitter Srinath. In this day and age of T20 cricket, would you have taken batting a little more seriously, Shivai? Oh, I think I regret quite a bit because I should have taken uh, batting a little more seriously. I mean, if, I, if, if, I, if I really look back, even, you know, during the, the fag end of my career, I was thinking that, you know, I could have really, you know, got into the batting even better could have contributed even more. Uh, again, again, you know, the, the number of overs what you bowled sometimes, you know, used to make me so tired that I couldn't really go and stand again the next day batting. Um, but by the end of it, I think I could have until, you know, I still regret that, you know, I, I didn't manage myself very well in that sense. Uh, maybe I should have thought harder about my fitness. Um, that could have contributed to my batting as well. Um, broke my few fingers. That's only because I was not really keen to go and bat out. Um, you know, my lapse of concentration was because of my fitness again. Um, but in, in between 28 to 32 years, and that's the peak where you are, where you are probably the strongest in your life. I really enjoyed playing 
the batting, you know. Then little later in my career, I struggled a bit because, you know, maybe I was focusing more. My entire energy was consumed by bowling and therefore I could not really focus on my batting. So I really regret batting. But had it been IPL for me, trust me, <laughs> I would have been... I'm sure, I'm sure you would have been... A, number two, number three and number four positions in batting. I'm sure you would have been a million dollar buy, Shiba. I have no doubts the franchises would have broken their bank for you. Uh, but thank you so much for joining me on this episode of DRS with Dash. There is so much to learn. But before I go, many more happy returns of the day, Shiba. And hope you celebrate. And I will see you in Dubai soon for the IPL. Thank you, Ashwin. Thank you very much. Wonderful talking to you. Bye-bye. Same here, Shiba. Thank you so much.